Let me just go ahead and start off by saying that this is not a kids movie. Nope. You know, Disney has always been a good happy tissues, live action movies most of the time. Yeah, no, this is not that. This is an adult movie, for sure. Do not take your kids. Cruella stars Emma Stone and Emma Thompson and is about a live-action prequel feature film following a young Cruella de Vil. Walking into Cruella, I wanted to see this movie because I liked the trailers. All the trailers, all the advertisement, I was like, I'm liking this 1970s London rock vibe. I was all in for it. And you got the guy who directed I, Tanya. Yeah. Now starting off with the pauses, we got to talk about Emma Stone. She doesn't steal the entire movie, but she steals a lot of scenes as Cruella DeVille. She's great. Like she is honestly really good. If the Oscars were happening right now, I would give her a Best Actor nomination. Like honestly, she is that good in this movie. Emma Stone is an Academy Award winning actress and in this movie, you can tell she is having a fun time with this role. Her laugh, how she talks, her eye movements, how she twitches and moves and looks at things. Like her acting in this movie is perfect. I now see Glenn Close and Emma Stone as Cruella de Vil. That's who I grew up with as Glenn Close as Cruella de Vil. Now Emma Stone, she can take that mantle because she's just that good in this movie. Because again, like the entire movie, she's this young girl who wants to go after her dream to become a designer. And when she gets the chance, she finally does it. And then turns out there's something that's way more dark and deep about what's happening around her, which leads to her becoming this other persona of Cruella de Vil, which kind of reminded me of Joker, but I don't think this movie hit the mark as well as her becoming something like more tremendous. She was morally like kind of a two personality kind of split. She was Stella, then Cruella, and then at one point in this movie, she becomes Cruella. She's walking around the house with her hair black and white, wearing these outstanding costumes. She is becoming Cruella, and I really like the development of the entire movie. Emma Thompson. She is wickedly evil. And she's good at it. And I mean, when you say the certain line of commanding a scene, you take that scene and all that kind of stuff, this is the definition. Emma Thompson is that good. She honestly, I would honestly consider her for supporting actress. I'm going to keep her in my mind for the rest of the year because she is that good in this movie. And she is evil. She does some dark shit. And like, I mean, like, again, like I said, this is not a kid's movie. It's definitely not. And Emma Thompson does some dark stuff, and she does dark stuff, but you love her performance because she's just so good at it, but she's so evil. And with both of them in the same scene, I was just enjoyment of their performances. And with their performances, we have this great production. I mean, A-plus material across the board, technical aspects of this movie. Direction by the director of I, Tanya knocks out of the park, does an amazing job. The cinematography, how it moves with the characters, how it's a lot of handheld. It felt gritty. It felt the 1970s feel, the look of the movie, the, the dark stormy rain, the darker tones. It, it just, it really meshed really well and I really enjoyed that stuff. Now I think a lot of people are gonna be kind of split on this movie because in all honesty, all the live action Disney remakes have controversy. You either really like them or you really hate them. Lion King. I don't know a lot of people that like the live action Lion King. Not really. It's good CGI, but that is it. Aladdin. I know a lot of people like it, and I know a lot of people that hate it. Cinderella, an underrated one that a lot of people really like, but a lot of people just don't remember. But then you get Cruella, a movie that actually took Cruella de Vil, a famous Disney villain, and changed it up. 1970s Goodfellas meets Devil Wears Prada. And I was all in for it. I liked the vibe. I liked the interpretation that we got of Cruella de Vil. I was into this entire world. So some people are going to be really turned off by that and be like, this is not my Cruella de Vil. It's not even a Cruella de Vil movie. At least they tried something new. Like, I like that they went darker. Like, I'm glad Disney said, hey, we're making it PG-13 and we're going to make this movie basically Goodfellas meets Devil Wars Prada. I was in love with it. I was in love with this world, the characters, the vibe of it, how the story went. Now, speaking of the story, my biggest, biggest issue has to be the music. Now, I'm not complaining about the music itself. It's good songs, it's good songs. But man, oh man, how many songs are in this movie? There's at least 40 plus songs and it plays every 10 minutes. New song, new song, new song. We get a song for like 
four seconds just for a certain little flashback scene or some little funny gag. That is it. It kind of reminded me of Suicide Squad. I'm not even kidding you. And I really hate that movie. But this movie, the music was way too, like, jumbo, jump, 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 jump. I was like, I was like, chill out. Like, I like these songs. Like, in certain scenes, it fit perfectly. There's great scenes with music. But then there's times I'm like, you didn't need to add that song. You did not need to do this. You did this for the moment or for the scene itself. And finally, I think this movie is way too long. I checked my phone twice and I pretty much was yawning all throughout the third act because even though it's late at night, but still, it was long. It's two hours and 14 minutes and I felt that runtime. It is a long movie, at least in standards of just pace because I felt that runtime. Besides the music, besides the pacing, and then besides probably better development of her becoming actual Cruella Deville, I had fun with this movie. I loved the world, I loved the direction, I loved everything I saw on screen. Some things could have been fixed a little bit better, like probably all the CGI dogs that we saw in this movie, but overall, I thought Cruella was a great time. I think it's definitely worth a watch in a movie theater. If you don't feel safe, it is on Disney Plus Premier Access for $30 if you want to pay that. But overall, Emma Stone and Emma Thompson should honestly be talked for awards in the fall. But for now, go enjoy yourself, get a big bag of popcorn, and go watch Cruella DeVille. And I'm gonna give Cruella a B plus. If I sat down and looked at all the live action remakes we got, I'm putting this one in my top three. It could possibly be my favorite because I loved how different it was. Disney took a shot and they did it. And I was entertained throughout the beginning to the end and I wouldn't mind watching it again. I don't know if I'll go see it in the theaters again, but I definitely will buy it on 4K when it gets released. Anyway guys, guys enjoy this review and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye bye everyone.